Miss Marvel Kamala Khan is here and she ain't going anywhere. This show was such a breath of fresh air. I absolutely enjoyed it. And I think it might be the most comic book looking Marvel show so far, even more than some of the movies. I mean, it has a great fun style. I enjoyed it and loved it. So in this video, I'll talk about Kamala, her great and diverse group of friends, loved them all, uh, her powers in history, what exactly are her polymorphous powers, and the end credit scene with Agent Cleary of the DODC, Department of Damage Control, who we also saw in No Way Home, interrogating Peter Parker, MJ, and Ned. Uh, and I first have to admit that um, I want to go to AvengerCon. Like, when is that going to happen? Is it going to become a real event? Because I would totally be there if it ever happens. But I guess that's their, their Comic-Con, uh, what we would say is our Comic-Con, which I've yet to attend. I know, don't you don't have to tell me, but I am planning to go to the next Comic-Con. Have any of you been? Because I'm dying to know how it is, how, how do you get tickets, how do you go about going to Comic-Con? Let me know, okay? And also, uh, I was a total Kamala in high school, so I really related to her a lot. I was always daydreaming and fantasizing of cool superhero stuff and movies. I mean, I, I still do, and it'll never go away. It's why I have this channel, uh, and there's nothing to be ashamed about. So if you're the same way, keep doing it. It only makes you better, okay? But how jealous was I that Kamala also has a YouTube channel, and it looks way cooler than mine? I was like, damn, Frank, like you really need to up your game. She has it going on, and I don't. Um, but the show is fantastic like i said uh i do like the small corner of the mcu that they're trying to reach and that is the young adult corner uh this is definitely a show for the younger kids who were probably born around 2008 who literally have grown up with the mcu just like kamala has grown up with the avengers it's a total representation of all of you who love this universe and for adults too but it's definitely going for a more younger uh, uh, vibe with the colorful scheme and the animation pop-ups all over. It's definitely doing it for a younger audience. It did remind me though of so many shows that I used to watch as a kid on Nickelodeon, like on Saturday mornings or even Snick, like Nickelodeon on Saturday nights. Uh, it made me think of Alex Mack. For those of you who, who know what I'm talking about, I just aged myself. But um, yeah, it has that really cool vibe uh, for a younger audience. But um, if the rest of the season is as charming and lovable and fun as the first episode, it'll definitely be a great show. Marvel has another hit. And how great since it features not just kids, but a very diverse group of kids, which is so important these days, so everybody can see themselves on screen. Uh, they all have different backgrounds and stories. There's so much potential with all of them. I thought it was great. And something that I do enjoy about the show is that it is very comic book accurate to the actual Miss Marvel uh, comic books. Like we've seen in other Marvel movies, some characters uh, like Fastos in the Eternals, like he is, you know, he's gay, right? And he has his partner and his child, but that's not the way it was in the comics. But this is the first show that is really showing you a diverse group of characters that are like that also in the comics. So it's very easy to just put on screen. And the biggest standout of all is Kamala, Miss Marvel herself. In Mon Villani, I can already tell you with a lot of certainty, she is a star. She's going to blow up how cool it is to be her right now that her first job as an actor is this Marvel show and her second job is the Captain Marvel sequel, The Marvels. I mean, I think we can all be a little jealous at this point. How, how nice is that? But I do have a lot of questions like what is the bangle made of? Where does it come from? What are the powers? Where do they come from? What, what are they made of? Uh, is Nani the grandmother a Pakistani hero back in the day? Did she send the bangle on purpose so Kamala would have it? Does mom know about the bangle? Is it only meant for whoever wears it? Or only for the Khan family? Or only for Kamala? Those are questions that I have. Also, is she gay? Uh, I'll get into that a little bit later, but I kind of got the vibe that she was, right? She had a little crush on Zoe, but we'll see. But anyways, uh, to give you a little recap, 
Miss Marvel follows Kamala Khan, an ordinary Pakistani American teenager in New Jersey whose Muslim family is very traditional with her, especially her mom. Uh, she has a great diverse group of friends, Bruno, Nakia, and Zoe. And after daydreaming about superheroes all day long, especially her favorite, Captain Marvel, she receives by mail a mysterious bangle from her grandmother, Nanny, which seems to grant secret powers to those who wear it. So let's first start with her home life because I really loved it. I thought her parents were great. I know that they may seem controlling and strict with her and very stereotypical of their culture, uh, traditional, but they are great parents to have on TV. They're responsible. They love their daughter and want the best for her. I think both actors, the mom and the dad, uh, did a great job in playing them. They were fantastic. The moment when the dad showed up wearing the Hall costume, oh my God, that was so funny. Uh, but it was also a little bit heartbreaking in the way that he got so uh, broken hearted when she was like, ah, you're humiliating me. I mean, we've all had those moments when our parents humiliate us because they keep treating us like children. They don't want us to grow up. And trust me, that never goes away. My mom and dad still do stuff like that to me to this day, okay? And they're not even close to me. They're in Puerto Rico. I'm in California. And they still treat me like a child. My mom still calls me every day, like around 10. Are you at home? Don't go out anymore. It's dangerous. Like, still. So it'll never go away. I understand her pain. And as for the mom goes, she was great. I know she's the one that had the most, um, she was the most strict with Kamala. But I have a feeling that mom, although tough on Kamala, also wishes that she had more freedoms and choices as a woman in her culture. Uh, she made a face in one scene that led me to believe that she's kind of like, ugh, like I wish I could do that, you know? But I also think that the mom knows more than she's leading on about the bangle and the history of that bangle or the family maybe. She did make a face when Kamala first took out the bangle and she also uh, said something about seeing people go down a bath path, people who daydream too much, don't end up well. It seemed like she was referring to Nani, the grandmother, who had the bangle previously. So I think her mom will either show Kamala more about the bangle and the powers or already knows about them. And I do think that the mom will come around and loosen up more with Kamala. As for the powers, the dad did use the word jinn at some point, which in Arabic and Muslim mythology, it's kind of like a genie, an intelligent spirit of lower ranking than angels that appears to be human or animal in form and can possess humans. So kind of like a genie. So it's quite possible that the powers come from a source like this. Maybe not so literally. I don't think that a genie will be popping up anytime soon, but I'm sure that the powers have some sort of link to uh, these myths and connections to their culture or religion. I would, I would use the word myth, that it was mystical, it was mystical powers, but I think that would be too much like Doctor Strange, and I don't think this show wants to have a lot of connections to Doctor Strange. So we just have to keep watching uh, each week until we know a little bit more. Now, one of the burning questions that I have, like I said before, is, is Kamala lesbian? I couldn't quite figure out if she was nervous around Zoe because she has a crush on her, or just because Zoe is a cool, popular girl. I do know that in the comics, Zoe is lesbian, but I had no idea that Kamala was. I thought in the comics, the LGBTQ hero was America Chavez. Although in Doctor Strange, they also didn't make that very clear. They made clear that her moms, that her mothers were a couple, but even though she wore a pin herself, it wasn't made clear if America was. But hey, if both America and Kamala are, the more the merrier. We'll accept you with open arms into our community. But it would be a giant step for Disney to not only have a Pakistani lead, but also have her be part of the LGBTQ community. Like, we should applause Disney for that because that is one huge giant step. And in Disney Plus right now, I'm noticing a lot of shows are coming, are coming or have already been, are already on the platform about uh, gay stories for, for kids and teenagers. So Disney is really trying to make an effort and they need to be applauded for that. Now, what about the gay, the counselor? Was he also gay? I'm sure he was gay too. 
But he was funny. I love the counselor. I hope we get to see him more. He was super funny. Uh, unfortunately, like everything else, I've already seen online religious groups boycotting the show over this, and it's just ridiculous. Like, let people live how they choose and how they want to live. It's so frustrating. Don't get involved with things that you don't know about, and don't try to cement and put your beliefs into other people. So don't pay attention to any of that if you see any of that. But going back to Iman Vellani, she is a star. She was so strong in front of the camera. Her presence is undeniable, her charisma, and she plays the outcast daydreaming teenager really well. She sold it. I'm excited for her and what she will uh, do for the rest of the show. Another burning question that I have is Bruno, her Italian best friend, who not only seems to be her Tony Stark, he also dressed as Tony Tony Stark for AvengerCon, so they're definitely giving us that hint that he will be the, the tech genius for her so that was great but does he have a crush on kamala it seems he's helping her not only because they are bffs but because it seems he is in love with her did what was i wrong in thinking that i mean i absolutely love bruno and i can definitely see the great chemistry that bruno and kamala have not just as characters but for sure as as uh, actors they must be really good friends by now because you can definitely see a connection that they have and that was really lovely to see. They're very believable. They're going to be a good duo together. And great duos do go around a lot in the MCU. We have the Wasp, Ant-Man. I mean, there's so many like duos, like male and female. So it's kind of nice to now have it also and uh, a more of a kid's version of it. But he reminded me a lot of Dustin from Stranger Things because it seems like he's going to be the one to have all of the answers and the knowledge uh, he's going to come up with a lot of good plans for her to help her solve either mysteries or, or battle plans. Or He's going to be that one guy that also gives her all the cool tech gadgets. He reminded me a lot of Dustin, which I think is great. He doesn't have the same charisma as Dustin, but you know it's, it's supposed to be a different, a different character. But it did remind me a little bit of him. Now, as for her other friend that we saw, Nakia, we didn't get to see a lot of her, but she will be around for the entire season. I do find her to be important because she is also Muslim. However, she is uh, from Turkey and Kamala is from uh, Pakistan. And she does wear her, her uh, hijab because of what it means to her and her faith, also in the comics. And Kamala doesn't, as we all saw on the show, even though she's also Muslim. And I, and I like this because it shows to audiences that not all Muslims are exactly the same. So it's good for the world to see this. But it's also good for Kamala because she's having such diverse friends. It'll help her see the struggles that people from different cultures have. And in turn, it's going to help her be a better friend and also a hero for everyone. So I think that's a really nice touch that this story has already. Now going into the end credit scene, we saw Agent Cleary. Uh, who was recently on Spider-Man No Way Home. And he is from the Department of Damage control and clearly he's going to be the one on the quest to either finding out what kamala is up to trying to catch her maybe helping her or at least trying to make sure she doesn't misuse her powers in a way that can harm civilians and i like that it already ties with it ties in with people we've seen in the mcu because now we can see that this is going to be a bigger story not just on disney plus it'll become later on in the movies so i like that it has that big uh, scope of the MCU, uh, the MCU, the Marvel Universe, you know? Marvel knows what it's doing. So again, I cannot wait for what else is to come of Miss Marvel. It was a super charming and fun first episode. What do you all think is gonna happen? Any answers that you guys may have already or theories, I would love to know. So drop them in the comment section down below and let's have a chat because I'm dying to talk to people about this. And um, again, you guys, this is my review for Miss Marvel. I love the show. Please go watch it and let's talk about it. This is where I leave you. And as always, I am Frank Javier and I'm signing off.